Hello beautiful internet people and welcome back to another video. So yeah, today I have something pretty amazing to show you guys. I'm pretty proud of this thing. So basically, I made Plague Inc. inside of Minecraft Bedrock. Now, I, th I think this is probably on the same level as like my word processors in like time and effort. Because yeah, it, it took me around 5 days to make and for my builds that's actually quite a lot. Like... I think my my second word processor took around five or six days. So yeah, this thing took quite a while to make. Now, for those of you who don't know what Plague Inc. is, it's basically a game where you control a virus and you have to infect and exterminate the entire world. Now, I have absolutely no idea why Google has been recommending that mobile game for me non-stop in recent times. But yeah, I thought, yay, that might be a great video. Now, like always with these sort of builds, there is a world download link in the description that you can download and try out for yourself. But just be wary that, as you can see, there's a lot of entities behind me. So if you're playing on a mobile, it might be a bit laggy. I mean, even on my new beastly computer, I had to turn down like um, the render distance just to get like a proper frame rate. Anyway. You're not here to listen to me rambling about random nonsense. Let's get into the video. Okay, so before we start, if you're wondering what this book is, this is just a little how to play guide if you don't know how to play the guide, the game. But if you don't know how to play the game, I'm going to give you a quick little explanation anyway. So if we press the start button, you'll see that we get this little virus that's totally not a retextured torch, it's definitely a viral virus. And what we will do is we can throw this anywhere on the map. So let's place it in Africa for no particular reason, it's just the nearest. And as you can see, it now turns red. Now basically, healthy is white, infected is red, and when you die, you turn this grayish color and that's for no particular reason except that's how they do it in the game so i just kind of copied the color palette from there now if you're wondering what that little thing over there is this is a dna point so if we walk into that you'll see that the dna point will disappear and we will get two dna points on the right hand side of the screen as you can see dna points Google gigo 4 we collect this one and it's now six. Now DNA points is basically the currency of the game. So if we collect a few over here, we can go to the upgrade window. Now from here, we can do a few things. We can upgrade the infectiousness, the infection range and the lethality. Now they pretty much speak for themselves. The first one's how fast it spreads. The second one is how far it can spread. And the last one is how fast it will kill the um, infected people. So let's buy the infectiousness and let's buy a range while we're at it. And as you can see now, we're spreading it over a larger area. Now, something that's actually pretty cool that I did by, by mistake, but ended up leaving inside of this thing, is the longer you run the simulation and the more people get infected, the slower new people will get infected. Now, this is sort of accurate towards the game because in the game, the more people get infected, countries will start shutting down borders and prevent it from spreading even more. So I accidentally simulated that inside of this version as well. So yeah, pretty top-notch command block engineering over here. I'm so used to saying rates and engineering, but yeah. Now it's command block engineering. But anyway, if we collect a few more DNA points, we can max out our um, upgrades over here. And then we can run a cool little time lapse of me playing until we infect everyone. Because if you didn't know, the goal is to exterminate everyone. So you can upgrade the lethality upgrade before everyone is infected. But then there is the slight chance that all of your infected people will actually die before infecting all of the new people. And if you didn't know, dead people can't spread things very good. So yeah, if they're dead, they can't spread it. So the ideal way of playing 
is to infect everyone before um, activating this little upgrade. So I'm going to collect a few more DNA points over here and I'll see you once everyone is infected. Two hours later. And here are the last few people that are still healthy. And... Okay, there the last one got infected and I timed that horribly. But yeah, as you can see, now everybody is red and we have 28 DNA points, so we can pretty much max out the lethality upgrade over here. So as you can see, we upgrade that one and people started dying. So I think this might be make for a cool little time lapse. So I think I'm going to time lapse this thing. Okay, so quick little editor's note here real quickly. I noticed that in the time lapse of um, people dying, we never really got the you win pop-up. And the reason for that was because of a little bug that I accidentally made. So on the last second, I added these three indicators, the healthy, infected, and dead. And basically what would happen is they would get tagged with the healthy tag because they were currently tagless and so the commands would think that these people are healthy even though they can never be infected and aren't part of the simulation so i quickly went ahead and edited that so if you play this world you shouldn't get that same bug but yeah i just thought i would quickly tell you guys that before we continue and the time lapse is over and as you can see we have won the simulation and exterminated everybody so yeah now that you see how it works let's get into the command blocks and also um maybe i should just demonstrate this before we continue but if what would happen is um if we were to um let's say let's just give ourselves some money real quickly scoreboard um, player add let's just say like at all G8 points let's just give ourselves like 50 or something crazy okay so basically the way that you lose it is if um, the people die before infecting everybody and we can simulate that over there and as you can see we have lost because nobody else can get infected because everybody is dead. Okay, so let's just reset it before we continue. Now, sadly, as you can see, every time you press start, you get the you win um, title. And I just couldn't find a workaround for that. But yeah, I, I literally tried for like half an hour. And But that's because it will think that since at, at a certain point in time, when you press start, everybody is nothing everybody is healthy and everybody is dead and everybody is infected at the same time and that causes the commands to kind of break when they have to decide if you're winning or not and so you get the winning prompt even though you haven't even played yet but let's get into the commands real quickly so over here we have the commands in this giant room that I totally forgot that I didn't finish doing the iron blocks interior but it's now too late for that I've already re-recorded this video four times not doing it the fifth time but anyway let's start out with these four um, command block chains over here so this one over here is basically just the start one and what it will do is, if you we check here real quickly, it will remove all of the tags from the armor stands, as well as reset your DNA points and all of that. And that is also how we determine um, how to spread the virus, as well as which things are alive or dead. Now, we do that using tags, as you can see there. 
Now in the last video with the, um, what do you call it, with Porto Gun, I didn't use tags, I used names, but I actually started out using names in this creation as well. But what I soon discovered was that for some weird reason, Bedrock doesn't have the feature to rename entities through commands. You can only summon in a new entity that is named, but you can't rename something that currently exists. That, so that's basically what the start function does over there. Now, these three are pretty simple. They are just the upgrades. So when the button is pressed, we check if the player's scoreboard value, that's called 10 A points, is higher than three or lower than a thousand because you have to get a minimum and a maximum value and I doubt anyone is going to stick around to get the thousand in a point so between three and and a thousand then if that's true then we will um, check what level the infection rate is at if it's a zero we will upgrade if it's one we will upgrade it if we will it's two we will upgrade it to three but if it's already three, then we won't upgrade it because it's already maxed out. And after that, what we will do is we will add one to the infectiousness and make it a bit more infectious. And after that, we will remove three DNA points because that's the price of the upgrade. If we jump over to this one over here, you can see that we remove five DNA points because that's the cost over there. And for the last one, we remove eight. Now, after that, as you can see, we started using unconditional command blocks. And this one will basically check if the infectiousness is between one and three. And if it's between one and three, we will set a redstone block to that position over there. And we basically just continue doing that and that's just to turn on these lamps so there are just a few set block commands with some logic behind them now for the main bulk of the command blocks these things don't actually do anything so we can get rid of them real quickly first of all we're going to check out these three command blocks so they test for an entity that's called torch and like i said previously the virus is just a renamed or retexted torch and when we throw that torch it will return this command block as true. When that happens this command block will activate because it's conditional and it will execute at the torch and choose a random armor stand that is in a range of two blocks of that um, of the torch and then it will pick one of those armor stands and give it the infected tag so it will infect one random um, armor stand and the next one will kill the torch now this command block chain over here is responsible for like the ui i guess sort of so as you can see it will simply um, replace the um the armor the armor stands um head slot with a helmet and that's basically how we get different colors so if you're infected you get a golden helmet if you are um if you are not um infected and you're not dead and you're also not the dna point and if you're not ui then you and you're not a player then you'll get the iron helmet which is the healthy tag and this one is the netherite helmet, which means you're dead. This one gives you a diamond helmet, which is the DNA point. And the last one over here will remove the healthy tag from anybody that is infected. Now, almost like the upgrades, we have range 0, 1, 2, and 3. And, they, and all of those four pretty much do the exact same thing. So we first check if the range value is between zero and zero. Th this one over here, range one, will check if it's between one and one, two checks between two and two, and three checks be between three and three. Now the range um, command block chains, they are combined with the infectiousness command blocks chain. And basically what they will do is if the range value is higher, that means that the virus should spread over a bigger distance. Now, 
so like I said we check what the range value is after that we we execute at a random entity so it will choose a random armor stand that has the infected tag so a random infected armor stand then from that armor stand it will pick another random armor stand that is not yet infected or dead and is within a one block radius of the currently infected armor stand and then give the infected tag to the new armor stand that was healthy before but is now also infected <laughs> I, I just realized this makes very little sense when I try to explain it but hopefully you're still with me hopefully, hopefully I haven't lost you yet so yeah this one will as I said this one will give the tag to an entity within a one block radius of an infected armor stand if we go over to range 1, as you can see that value changed to a radius of 3, range 2 changes the value to a radius of 4 blocks and range 3 changes it to a range of 5 blocks. After that we give, we um, we check what the infectiousness level is, if it's between 1 and 3 then we um, add the infected tag to the um, the new armor stand. So if if you have no upgrade for the infectiousness, it will default to being level zero. And so that's where that's also when this thing will trigger because everything is already at level zero. But if you upgrade it, then it will become level one. And that's what happens here. We it has become level one upgrade and then we will do we will repeat this command block just two more times until we reach this one which will check if the infectiousness is higher than level two if that's true it will run this command block again a few times until it eventually checks if infectiousness is level three and then run these last four few command blocks now that is actually how I control how fast the infection spreads. Now there could have been a few different ways of doing it, like maybe using like um, like maybe changing delay in ticks. But I this was kind of a quick and dirty way that actually ended up working, so I ended up using it. So in the beginning, I mentioned that the more people get infected the slower the virus will continue to spread and that's thanks to us using um using at random so what i should have done was to check if the armor stand that's infected is next to an armor stand that is not infected but i forgot to add that tag and so basically there are a few times that we will try to infect an armor stand that's already infected and that kind of slows down how fast the virus spreads because obviously if more people are already infected the chance is bigger that we will choose another infected person to try and inf infect it again but it's already infected so we can't infect it again and yeah hopefully that made sense I'm sorry if it didn't make sense but I think that made sense. Yeah, I I, I, th I hope it made sense. But anyway, so that's how we control the spread. Now, these two is basically just winning and losing. And they took me forever to figure out. And I'm still not, and they're still not perfect. Like I said, sometimes um, when you reset the game, we will trigger this win command block for some strange reason. So these last three command block sets are pretty simple. The first one is just responsible for the death. And as you can see, we check for lethal between one and three. And I'm not going to go through this one block for block again, because it's pretty similar to the other ones. Basically, we check what level um, death is, and then we just check if they are infected, if they are infected we give them the dead tag and then this is just like if um, the lethal tag is higher then we do that again but to more and more people eventually 
Now moving on to DNA points, that is responsible. This is responsible for those little pop-up DNA points that you can collect, and it's actually quite simple. We just kill any armor stands that have the DNA point name, and after that we summon in a new armor stand that's called DNA. And over here, as you can see, we will give it also the DNA point tag because I couldn't figure out how to summon an entity that already has a tag. And then over here, it's pretty simple. We will just teleport the DNA point to DNA point and that's just kind of a way to remove gravity, if that makes sense. So basically just the... Um, Basically what will happen is the armor stand won't actually fall down and we can force it to like levitate in the air that, like I'm doing now. So we can just make it pop up a little bit more and it makes it look a little bit cooler. After that we give we make the armor stand invisible. After that we check if there is a player within a two block radius. If there is a player within a two block radius we will give the player two DNA points as you can see and then we will kill the item, the armor stand that was has the tag DNA point and that's how the collection system works. So yeah, hopefully my explanations sorta made sense, I hope. But yeah, if you do enjoy, f feel free to leave a like and to subscribe if you are new around here and like I said there, ooh. There will be a world download link in the description for you to check out. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. And I will see all of you again in the future with a brand new video. Bye!